Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Many of you probably know that over the past few years, there's been a lot of this so-called AI technology introduced into the world of photography, particularly when it comes to post-processing. And many of us have been trying to figure out the best way to integrate this AI technology into our workflow. You also may know that for a little while now, Adobe has been making available to Creative Cloud subscribers the ability to download a beta version of Photoshop. And in the current beta version of Photoshop is some new AI technology that Adobe calls Generative Fill. Personally, I've been trying to figure out how to best integrate Generative Fill into my workflow. I primarily use Lightroom. As a matter of fact, I could do most of my editing in Lightroom and never have to leave Lightroom at all. But every now and then, I'll have an image that needs something done to it that can't be done in Lightroom, but can be done in, let's say, Photoshop. And I'll jump over into Photoshop with that image, do my edits there, then return to Lightroom. Well, when is the best time to send an image from Lightroom into Photoshop to use generative fill? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. We're going to work on this image. This is a really old Nikon RAW file. It was taken in 2012, this beautiful little waterfall that isn't far from where I live in a nice little park that has a lot of great hiking paths. And one path goes along the bank of the little stream and it comes to a nice little observation area where you could take some great photos of the waterfall. Unfortunately, there's this unruly ugly bush over here on the right that always juts out into the shot. And in the past, I would take this into Photoshop and use like the spot healing brush or the healing brush and remove each of these branches individually and it would take over an hour to do. Well, instead of using the spot healing brush or the healing brush, I want to send this into the beta version of Photoshop and use generative fill to get rid of that bush. When is the best time to do it? Well, I've been experimenting and I found that the best time to use generative fill is after you do some editing on your image. As a matter of fact, after you edit quite a bit of the image, I found that if you send the raw file as is into Photoshop and use generative fill, it will work okay and seem to work okay. But once you start editing tone and color, you'll start to look like it will look odd it will look like something was work was done over there you know it will look like bad plastic surgery so what i found though is if instead in lightroom you do your edits for color and tone then go over into photoshop use generative film come back it looks more natural so that's what we're going to do uh it was taken with the dslr so i'm going to go to lens corrections and enable profile corrections i'm going to go up to the basic tab now, there's a lot of tonal range, a lot of dynamic range in this shot. Uh, the sky was very bright, pretty dark down in here. So I want to try to capture as many tones as possible from, you know, absolute white to absolute black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring highlights way down to begin with. As a matter of fact, I'll bring them all the way down. I'm going to open up the shadows quite a bit. But then I'm going to get a white point by holding the Option key on my Mac. It's all key on the PC. Click on whites, I'll get this entirely black screen. I'm going to start moving this to the right. You can see I'm almost immediately starting to blow out the sky. I don't really care about the sky. The sky isn't important. The waterfall is important. So I'm going to go until I start to blow out the waterfall. You can see the blue channel starting to clip now. I'll just back it off until hopefully all that blue or most of that blue dissipates. It's right about there. So now the waterfall is nice and bright. Now the sky is bright too, but I plan on probably putting a vignette on it so it will darken the edges anyway. So I'm not really too worried about the sky. No one should work look up there anyway. We're going to be looking at this waterfall. So I'm going to get the black point by doing the same thing, holding the option key, click on blacks. This time the screen turns white. Those of you that watch my videos know that I don't mind clipping the shadows. As a matter of fact, I like to clip the shadows. I like to have a lot of tonal range. I like to have absolute black and almost absolute white. In this case, I probably do have absolute white by the sky. So there's that. Now I'm going to add a little bit of texture, not a lot. I'm going to add a little more clarity though. And I'm not going to do any vibrance or saturation yet. What I found for my edits, I like to go to the HSL color first and work on color there. Sometimes I'll never even then have to add any vibrance or saturation, but sometimes I do. We'll see. What I like to do is go to the luminance sub tab first and affect the tone of the colors, the brightness of the colors. I'll start with yellow. Um, I usually start with yellow for some reason. It's just habit. Uh, the rocks, you can see where the sun's hitting the rock. It's yellow. It's going to affect that probably. I don't see any many grasses, but I'm going to make the yellows brighter. I'm going to make the oranges darker, just kind of get more total variance. Um, maybe I'll make the yellows not that bright. I'll bring this like fern or whatever that moss there. I mean, I should say kind of like too fluorescent. It wasn't that fluorescent. It was darker when I was there. And now blue, 
obviously it's going to affect the sky, but it's going to affect the water as well. And if I move it to the right, you see how it's making the water brighter? I want to make the water brighter because that's the main subject. I want people to notice that. Then I'm going to go to saturation. I'm going to move up saturation to orange, move up saturation to yellow, move up saturation to green. Now I don't want to move up saturation to blue because it'll make the waterfall blue. Uh, but I will pull saturation away from that. It just makes it more pure white. That looks pretty good. Now, I'll jump back up to basic, and I will add a little bit of vibrant. Okay, so we've come quite a long way. There's before, and there's after. Before, after. All right, now I'm going to send the image over into the beta version of Photoshop to use generative fill. I have my Lightroom set up so that I could send an image from Lightroom into the beta version of Photoshop. If you don't know how to do that, I do have a video that demonstrates how. I'll have it linked in the description below this video. Also, if you don't know what I'm talking about, the beta version of Photoshop, and you don't know how to download it, in that video, I demonstrate how to download the beta version of Photoshop as well. Again, it'll be linked in the description below this video. Now, let's send this image over to the beta version of Photoshop by right-clicking on it, going down to Edit In, and going over and up to Edit In Adobe Photoshop Beta. And it will actually create a TIFF file, and it will send the TIFF file over there. So it's non-destructive. It's not affecting the raw file at all. And now what I'll do is immediately use generative fill. And to use generative fill, I need to make a selection first. So I need to select the bush. Now you don't have to select every single branch of the bush individually, nothing like that, just a rough selection. You could use any selection tool to do that. I think most often you probably use the lasso tool, and that's what I'm going to use. And I'm going to have it in add mode, although I'm going to try to do it in one false swoop. But if I can't, I'll just do part of it, then add another part, then add another part. So I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm just going to go up. Now, I am actually going to kind of loop in and out between these branches that are jutting out, although I probably don't have to do that. I'm probably going to, I probably really don't, but I'm going to do it anyway. Now, I'm running out of mouse pad, so I need to come down. I'm kind of making a little thing here. So we'll come up here to the edge, go over to that edge. I'm outside now just doing the edge. Then come here to close my selection. And now I have marching ants going around that bush. It's a rough selection, very rough selection, nothing exact. Then what we do is we go to this contextual taskbar. That's what this thing is called. I'm going to move it up here. See, once you make a selection, you'll have a generative fill button. That button will only be there when you have a selection. What you need to do is just click on that button. And when you do, the contextual taskbar will move away from where you put it. It does that all the time. And I'll put it back up here. You could give it a suggestion on what you want it to do, what it, you want done. But don't write anything there. Just don't write a thing. And just click Generate. Now, what it will do is it will send your image up to Adobe servers. And all this new AI magic is done on Adobe servers. If you don't want your image to go to Adobe, don't use generative fill. There's no way around it. Then what will happen is... Adobe will return three different versions, and you can see which one is best. Now, you could see that it got rid of the bush beautifully. I mean, that saves so much time, but I really don't like this version. So we'll go to the second version it gave us. And there's some, like, I don't know, weeds over there. I don't like that. All right, now this one I like, but you see there's a rock here. Now, if I turn off this layer and look at the original layer, you could see it's totally different than what really was there, but it did get rid of the bush. Now, one thing I want to add, though, I just want to mention is about waterfalls in general. As you know, they're not static. They're dynamic, and there's water erosion. And I'm sure over the, you know, between 2012 and now, over the last 11 years, this waterfall looks considerably different. Um, the moss is different. The rocks have eroded. Rocks that were upstream came down and got stuck in here. So it looks different. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. If you still don't like, though, what it did, you could click Generate and get three more samples. And you could keep clicking Generate and keep getting three more samples as much as you want until you get a version that you like. I actually do like this version, but let's do and see what it gives us with three more. And there's another version, there's another version, and there's another version. I'm going to stay with that third version. That's the one I liked. And I like it. So that I'm done with the beta version of Photoshop and Generative Fill. And the way I... Now, you need to save this, but the way I do it is I just go to Photoshop and quit Photoshop. I usually just hit Command-Q on my Mac. You could just exit out on a Windows computer, but just make sure you click on Save. It just saves a step, then hitting you know, Command-S to save on a Mac or going up to File, Save, and then Closing. Just do this. It saves a step, you know, because, you know, faster. But it still takes a while to save. All right, now here we are. Now we need to finish our edit. Now at this point here, 
I want to bring more attention to the waterfall. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to masking and I'm going to get a radial gradient and I'm just going to draw it out. And I don't really care where I draw it or how I draw it because what I'm going to do is right where this little pin is, I'm going to hold the command key on my Mac, control key on a PC, and then double click on that pin. And when you do that, it will just bring your radial gradient edge to edge. Now you can see it's affecting the middle. That's where the red overlay is. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push exposure up. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new mask and I'm going to create another radial gradient and I'm going to draw it out just like I did the last one and I'm again going to hold in the command key and double click on that pin in the middle so it goes edge to edge and then this one I'm going to invert and then I'm going to go to exposure and I'm going to pull it down. So I'm making the outside darker. So I made the inside brighter and the outside darker. Now I have two different radial gradients here. There's the second one. And here's the first one. I'm going to go back to that first one. I'm going to go to color and I'm going to increase saturation. Right? And I think I'm pretty much done. I'll close down that and that's it. Now you can see how it doesn't look like, like any work was done over here. It looks natural. I'm sure if you printed this and I went to this little observation area and stood here, it looks different. But it, it's 12 years or 11 years. So it's going to look different anyway. But that's how I integrate generative fill into my Lightroom oriented workflow. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.